So today, come on, I'm going to finish my series about uh, facing or, or fighting against your giant. If you are here for the first time and you were not here the, the past two weeks, I wish our life could be so easy that we just walk and nothing happened. I mean, how many of you think, okay, if I have $1,000 in my bank account, if I have $10,000 in my bank account, I will be happy. You know, when you get to that point that you have the $1,000, that will never bring the happiness in your life. There is always something you want. Somebody asked a, a guy in Ohio that he has a lot of money, and somebody asked him, so do you, do, uh, uh, do you get tired because you have the money to buy everything you want? You have a lot of money, so do you get tired? It's any, any way in your heart that you, don't, that you don't have that space for new things? And he said to that person, I always want more. I always want more more you know what our life is it's a, it goes through seasons we have good seasons that everything like the, the world is smiling at you a green lights you don't have a red light in front of you everybody's driving perfect but you have those dates that is a mess that you want to kill a couple of people if you could huh you literally want to kill a couple of people if you can if you can do it but you know life is about going through seasons and there is something that we're going to talk today about it's a season of giants and there are things that will step in between you and your destiny that we call those things giants. In the past two weeks, we've been talking about the, the giant of confrontation. Just giving, giving you a little bit of, of what we've been talking here. The giant of confrontation. You know how many people are losing family and wife and husbands and just because we don't have the ability to confront somebody. If, you're doing so, if I'm doing something wrong, I will expect from you to come and tell me you're doing something wrong. So confrontation is good, pride, it's bad. <laughs> so the giant of pride, pride will take you to places of destruction. We talk about the, the giant of complaining, the, the giant of, of debts. That's very, that's very big because our, our culture is like that. If you want to build your credit, you have to get on, you have to have a good debt. I learned that. If you want to build up your credit, get a car, get a loan so you can buy a house. So debts, it, there's something about debts that is just, um, making us slave. We are living an inheritance of debts to our kids and not an inheritance of blessings. It's not about the money you can give to your kids. It's about the inheritance. Okay, I will pay my credit cards. I will have my payments on time because I don't want you to learn to relate in those things. Okay, uh, business and all, oh, a lot of stuff here, but I don't want to take a lot of time here. But uh, I want to talk about the story of, of a young Girl, I don't know what, how, how old she was. I read this somewhere. somewhere. Um, the, uh, this girl ha had a dream. She wanted to get married. And since she was a little girl, she said, I wanted to get married and I want to have a, be a beauty, beautiful husband. And I want this, my wedding, to be an amazing party. It will be perfect. I imagine myself dressing like this. He will be like that. Like, huh? And, and, and I, I will get to that place, I will hug him, and it will be a per You know, girls, you, got, you girls dream about those, that moment of, of getting married, that moment of t seeing your husband face to face and get to hug him. We are thinking of different stuff, but you girls are also, I mean, it's all about that beautiful wedding and that beautiful ceremony. But this, this little girl, oh, not a little girl, this girl had something that she never thought about. One day, a guy came to her and she he said to her you know what you will be pregnant and this girl said okay yeah i will be pregnant if i get married tomorrow get, I'm, I'm working on it if, when we get married i'm gonna get i'm gonna get pregnant i'm gonna have a baby say, yeah no 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 you don't get it right now you will be pregnant you're blessed because you will be pregnant and god son of god will come and you will deliver the son of god and at that moment, if you go back to the Bible, Mary said, I, it was just, she, was, she was confused because, okay, you're telling me that my wedding, it's not going to happen. You're telling me that Joseph, Jose, and I, we are, we are in, the, in, in our way to get married. But right now you're saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pregnant. How do I share this with my parents? How do I share this with him? He, they won't believe that I'm, that I'm pregnant. Imagine your daughter will come to you right now. I said, I'm pregnant. And Gabriel told me. Who's Gabriel? 
Who's Gabriel? I'm going to kill him. <laughs> tell, tell him to come and talk to me. We're going to have to talk. I'm going to have to talk to Gabriel. So, but in that moment, Mary was there in a position of, okay, okay, do I say yes to this word or no? If I say no, I will have my dream wedding. I will have everything I want. Life is about that decision that will come to your life one time. And today could be the day that you can say yes or no to what I'm presenting to you. And Mary said, okay, right now, right here, I have to make a decision. And my decision is yes. But at the same time I say yes to you, I have to say yes to a giant that we're going to call today the giant of people. How many of you have people in your life? How many of you would like to take some of those people out of your life? Out of your life, huh? <laughs> you know, in Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 26 and 28, you, it talks about the, the Elizabeth. She, were, she was pregnant and, and Gabriel came to, to uh, talk to Mary and everything. So you guys can have it in your, in your Bible. It's Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 28, to, through 28. And I don't want just to, I don't want to read it. I want to uh, just talk to you about that. So, Mary came and talked to Jose. You know who's Jose? Joseph? And she talked to Jose and said, okay, Jose, we're going we're gonna to have a baby. <laughs> you and me are going to have a baby. Because Gabriel, Gabriel? <laughs> who's Gabriel? Is that your neighbor? No, Gabriel came to me and he said that I'm going to have a baby and it's going to be the son of God. Okay, let me make you an appointment to go to the doctor because Mary, you're losing your mind. <laughs> Jose, I need you to trust me. Trust me. And just, uh, Jose went, went back and said, you know, I would love to trust you, but there's something that I, have, I, need to, I need a confirmation. So the Bible says the angel came back to Joseph and said, I'm Gabriel. You know, Gabriel... Gabriel? Yeah, I mean, I'm, this is it. Gabriel, he said, that is the son of God. So at that moment, Joseph said, okay, if this is the son of God, I have to face a giant that we're going to call people. And you know, uh, people have the ability to control a life. Right now, in your life, right now, you probably are not the result of what God spoke into your life before you were born. You are the result of that teacher that told you you're, you're not worth it. That you, will ne you will never make it. Right now, you are the result and you're carrying your life. Not because of what he said you are. It's because what the doctor said you will do. It's about, about, about uh, the, the culture. So people have the ability to name you. People have the ability to say who who you are and people sometimes have the ability to control who you are you know the way we dress is the way we're seeing people dressing the way we speak is this, the way we are seeing people speaking you know our youth right now they are looking up to someone to look like someone to behave like someone because people have the ability sometimes to influence you. And you, get, you make your decisions based in what they're saying about you. You walk your life based in what they speak about you. And I shared with you last week about, about the testimony of this ring. I had this five years ago. It's, uh, one of our Cuban members from our church. This is, for, for us here probably it's not a lot of money. But for him it was a sacrifice. He gave it to me. And I've been keeping this in my house because I've been thinking, what if people think, because I'm wearing this ring, uh, ring, I have money. What if people think, what if, what if. So our life right now, it's, it's what if. I'm not going to go to church because what if people think that about me. I'm not going to do that because it, what if. And we have to make a decision sometime today before 2020 to say, in 2020, I'm not going to walk in what if. I'm going to walk in what I know who I am and I know who he is and I know my calling in my life. So I don't care about what you guys are saying right now. I'm going to keep walking. You know how many people I had in Cuba saying, do not go to America. You will lose everything you have. 
But at that time I said, okay, if I listen to them, I will stay in Cuba. I will stay with the church and everything I have. But if I know that he said that I want my baby to be born in a free country, I'm going to walk on water if I need to, but my baby will be born in a free country. So I had to shut up the voices and walk in what he said that he would do. You know, before you were born, he says something about you. And we walk our life trying to find out that voice back again. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were, before you were formed in your mother's womb, he said something about Pastor John. Before you had a thought that you're going to be a pastor. Before you had a thought that you're going to be married to Lori. Before you had a thought that you're going to have beautiful kids. Before that, he said, I call you my son. And I inform you before you were born, before everything, everybody knew about you, before the, your mama named you, I, I form you. You are my son. You are worth it. And people don't have the ability to form you, to, to deliver you, to make you who you are right now. I don't want to be the Josue that people want. I don't want to be Josue for them. I want to be the, what, what you want me to be. I want, if I have to say no to people right now to walk in what he wants me to do in 2020, I will do it right now. I, you know, I messed up in my life so many times because I hurt that friend that I know he is wrong, but I keep hearing him. Does that make sense? Hmm. You know, our giants are that thing that will stop you, will make you slow, and will not make you move forward. You know, our life, before, uh, when we were born, we were like that. We go to school and they, they add something to our car. And now we, we, we keep growing and they still adding something to your car. And, 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 and they still adding something to your car. And now you have a mortgage. And now you have a, a uh, I don't know, a debt because you didn't plan. Or now you have a, a, a three, four babies and five. And so life is about this. And plus, there is someone right here that is driving a car. You know what? Do you know what's the problem right here? The ones who are speaking to you. They will not go to you with you to their destination. They will not go with you to their, your destination. Where are we listening to people like that? Guys, Mary and jo uh, Jose, he said, they said, okay, you know what? If we say yes to the Lord, we're going to have to face criticism they will come and they say okay you you guys had sex before you get you guys were married you guys violate and break out all the laws we have in Israel so you deserve death in Joseph's hands was Mary's life and Jesus life he could have said okay that's not my baby that's Gabriel's Gabriel's that's not my baby. Are you willing to face that giant for your family? Are you willing to say no to people for your destiny in 2020? I'm going to share with you one more giant because I want to do something special today to close this series. And this is a giant that, I, that has been killing our marriages, our, our couples, our churches, everything. Is a giant of expectation. And it's very, very dangerous. Can you read with me? Expectation. Expectation. Expectations. 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 And the Bible says, for us a child is born and, da, 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 and everything. Okay, for us a son is given and, and, and the, 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 the kingdom and everything, the, the government will be upon his shoulders and everything. So Israel... Had that prophecy 750 years before Jesus were born, he was born. 750 years, God said to Israel, my son will look like this. 
and you will call him P Prince of Peace and the government will be, will be upon his shoulders and everything will be this is the way you will find out that, they, that that's my son 750 years after that we have a boy that was born not in a palace not in a beautiful place but was born in that area over there somebody's ranch <laughs> and then the, pro the problem is that they were waiting for the Lord of war and they knew he was the Prince of Peace so they were expecting someone that will come and they free me from this people from the from the mountain for everything and but I knew he wouldn't do it so sometimes we are expecting things from people we expect things from from God we I mean this is a stupid I'm not going to tell him nothing. I'm going to wait. Giancarlo, what do you do? I'm going to wait for him to, to talk to me. You know, this is sometimes, I'm not going to tell him nothing. He knows, Giancarlo, what do you do? That I'm not feeling good. He should come to me and talk to me. That's my husband. We've been married for 25 years. So he knows I'm not feeling okay today. So us, that we don't have that bright mind and we're, we're not in that prophetic level. We just wake up in the morning and have some coffee there. Give me milk, sugar, more sugar, more, 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 and more. And we go, we go to work because we don't find, we don't see what's going on. But she's suspecting that he will react or he will say, okay, oh, I feel, uh, I know you had a dream last night. And in that dream, you had this, then that, that, that. And I know you're, 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 not, you're not okay. And he, she was expecting for him to come and hug her and give her everything she wanted and everything. But that expectation is just a lack. It's, it's imagination. If you don't express your desires, there's no way I will be able to fulfill it. If you don't express, if you're feeling bad or wrong, if there's something wrong with you, something bad, if you don't express your expectation, you will find, you will get, you will end in depression. Yeah. So imagine Mary and Joseph going and say, okay, we have to go to, to Bethlehem and we have to do that. Imagine, okay, if this is the son of God, I would expect like a, a horses and, and, and horses with fire, first class. Hey, take me to Bethlehem. This is the son of God. I'm expecting for God to do something. And that's what happened with, with us. We, are, we expect and we are mad of God because he didn't answer in the plan we asked for. And there are so many people say, when I asked God to do that, he didn't do it. That's why I'm mad. And I expected him to do something. So we put the pressure on God and we don't express what we really are expecting. And he knows everything. But you know what? Mary and Joseph said, okay, we're going to have to go to Bethlehem. So you provide. No, no, no provision. So our donkey. When they got to Bethlehem, they said they, they were able to register and everything. Everything was packed. No hotel. Imagine if I am carrying the son of God. If this is the son of God right here, you better provide. This is your son. This is not mine. Yeah. Talk, to, talk, talk to Gabriel. <laughs> this is your son. not my son. It, it may, imagine the expectation in Mary and Joseph when they had the son of God in their belly, in her belly. Said, this is the son of God you will provide. And from a hotel that I was expecting a hotel, I end up here. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't look like the son of God is worth it. To be born in this place. Imagine the wise men. They were traveling for so many. Sometimes there are people that say years. Try and following the star. Imagine if I'm following a star. And supernatural star. And, and, and everything. And I'm going to see the king of the world. The guy that is going to be born. And he will save us all. And that was prophesied 750 years before us. And we are following that star. We are expecting. That's why they went first to the palace. They were expecting a king. And they saw a poor baby. Expectation can kill you. What are you expecting today? 
What's that expectation that you have today? Are you expecting that God will finally do something? I'm tired to come and tell him what I want to. I got to the point that I said, I'm willing. I'm not ready. I'm willing. And whatever you want to do, do it right now. I'm not expecting everything because you already gave everything you have. You gave it all for me. The giant of expectations killing our couples is killing our churches. I, will, I expect you to come and visit me. My expectations were that you will come and hug me and, and kiss me. You didn't do it. Get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Do not expect. Be free of expectations. Because you know what? No one will, over, will, will ever fulfill it. Your expectations. No one, even your husband, your mom, your wife, no one, even they've known you for years, they will never fulfill your expectations. There's no way. I'm going to finish with this today. I'm hoping. You know what? Can you play? Toca, uh, Pro, you're here today and you said, you know, I'm. I have the giant of people speaking to my life. You know what? If you, came, if you came here this morning waiting for it, if our preaching doesn't challenge you, we should go home. If what, if what we're preaching right here is not about your daily life, you should go home. We can come here and preach about what happened 2,000 years ago, but I'm telling you what is going on right now. Right here. I'm telling you that if you don't change that, 2020 will be the same year that you have in 2019. I'm trying to repeat my mistakes. I want to stop the cycle of mistakes I have in my life and I keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. I had to stop seeing what I'm doing wrong. I'm listening too much to people and I'm probably that, that's taking me south. And I'm, I'm, I'm expecting too much from the staff. I'm expecting too much from my husband. I'm expecting too much from my wife. I'm expecting too much from my church. They didn't come to visit me. They didn't. You know what? They all have their problems too. What if? In 2020, we decide to be free. What if, if, we don't, if we decide to not expect anything from the government? What if we decide that God, President Donald Trump or uh, whatever is going on in Washington right now will, ne- will not change who we are? What if we do our job and get us free from the talks and, and the gossip and the things that this world is presenting to us and say, okay, in 2020, if I'm going to make any change in my life for 2020, I'm deciding right now, right here, that I will be free. Yeah. Imagine living your life free. And the son says, free is free indeed, and he will set you free. And the truth will set you free, but the lie will slave you. It depends. If you're listening to the truth, you will be free. But if you're listening to the lie, you will be slave. Today, family of faith. Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. And he had to face, even from his mother's womb, the giant of people and expectations. Imagine I'm the son of God and I'm 11 years old and haven't performed any miracle. Imagine my brothers and sisters, oh, you're the son of God? Turn this water and wine. The expectation will kill a generation. I'm not expecting anything from the government. I'm not expecting anything from the church. Do not expect anything from me. Let's be free. Let's be free. Let's be free. If you are in a hospital bed and you're praying for someone, if you text someone to come, if they come, you hug them, kiss them, share the food because they're in the hospital, there's very good food. But if they don't come, don't carry that on you. 
be free. If you had an appointment with somebody and somebody messed up, be free. If somebody betrayed you, be free. It is the time right now to say, I, I will, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to keep carrying this, this on me. There are people right here, right now, that their life is, is going this way just because somebody 20 years ago did something to you. And you don't have the courage to go back and say, okay, God, let's face it. Let's face it. I'm not going to keep moving my whole family that way, not just because of you. I need to fix my situations. I need to fix my problems. I'm not the trash can that everybody can come and dump everything on me. We need to set up a boundary and say, okay, I'm not, because you know what? You know what's the point right here? Your kids are following you. Your wife is following you. If you're a leader, your leadership is following you. And you know, you're following your pain. Twenty, twenty. If I have to go backwards and take my whole family backwards, and go back to 2013 when I messed up and I did something wrong. I will go back and say, okay, from now on, you're not coming with me. I'll keep going my way, but you're not coming with me. You probably going to have to make hard decisions right now. You probably going to have to call somebody and say, okay, from now on, we're not going to walk together anymore. I had to learn in my life that there are people that will come to your life just for a season to help you. If you keep carrying those people with you, they will take you to their place, not your place. There is a season that God will send people that will walk with you, and that season is fine, but we have to find the time. Okay, from now on, you go your way, I go my way, because if we go together, something, we're going to fight. You're going to pull me to places that I don't want to be, and I want to be free, because the Son of God came to earth 2,000 years ago for me to be free. You hear my heart? I want, a, I want a family of faith to be known in this city. Not the, the church that have a big center or a big church or, or a nice background and, and, and thing or a worship team. I want our church to be, more, to be known as the church that doesn't hold. I mean, we don't, we don't get offended. We just walk our life free. If you have me, you have me. That's fine. I kiss you. If you don't have me, that's fine. I'll have myself. Freedom. It's a person. And freedom. It's a decision. Freedom. It's a decision. Guys, for, for, don't let me preach. Keep going. Because I have a couple things that I don't want to share today. What do you have in your car? What's that giant that is part of your life, that it doesn't look like a giant. It's part of the family. That time at 3 o'clock in the morning when everybody's sleeping and you go and you watch those things that you shouldn't be watching, that even, that it doesn't, that it, it doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't feel like a sin anymore. You know, whatever you're doing wrong that you know it's a sin and it doesn't look like a sin, it's a giant that is part of you. And you're not even facing it because it's part of you. If lying, it's a normal thing in your life, that's a giant that is already attached to you. And it'll take you to make the decision, not tomorrow, not 2020, to today, right here. Are you with me? This is my heart, guys.